Hello and welcome to Maldorma TV. My name is Magnus Alberg, And I'm Tobias Alberg, and this is episode 15. In this video, we're going to talk about our recent trip to India and what we experienced there and why we went there. Yeah, we decided to go to India and we stayed there for three weeks and we visited three main locations. So the first one was Nanital, second one was Rishikesh, then we finished off with uh, Dharamsala. Yeah, and today we're going to talk about basically the first places in Nanital because Nanital is a small village up in the Himalayan mountains where actually a number of saints lived uh, has lived during the past few hundred years and yeah. we wanted to visit these places. Yeah, and mainly we had an uh, attraction to go visit um, Nimkaroli Baba Ashram, yeah. uh, Kanshidam mainly, yeah. uh, where um, which has been made famous by Ramdas and Krishna Das. So we have listened a lot to the, their music, yeah. Krishna's music. We read their books and uh, their lectures. So yeah. naturally, we've been drawn to Nimkaroli Baba for a long time. Yeah, and we wanted to go there. And prior to this journey, both of us felt that we wanted to take our spiritual journey another step, uh, another direction, and, and go to India and, and actually see these places. And also prior to this uh, journey, I had this, I was channeled information during a spiritual experience where one of the messages was that uh, we should go to India and the Northern India in particular first. Yeah, and um, we also read the book quite recently, Deva Bhumi by Bhumi or how do you pronounce yeah, it? Deva Bhumi. Or yeah, uh, by K.K. Shah. Uh, K.K. being one of uh, Maharaj's closest devotees and also yeah. friend of Krishna's and Ramdas. Yeah. So we had this really, uh, yeah, attraction towards this guru called uh, or this saint called Sombari Baba as well. Yeah. The book is mainly about that saint that lived in the same area. And actually, Nimkarol Baba or Maharaji actually established his temples on all sides of Sombari Baba. And KK also talked about another saint called Harikan Baba that also lived in the area. So we felt that, well, we want to visit the temples connected to these three saints. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think... Uh, for the longest time, at least for us, we have had this uh, experiences with having experiences with uh, Maharaj, yeah. uh, Nimkaroli Baba. Yeah. Uh, so it felt natural that we also wanted to go there yeah. um, to to meet him where he lived, if you will. And after we had decided to go to Nanital in northern India, uh, some other synchronicities started to come in a quite rapid pace. That pace that pointed towards the Divine Life Society founded by Swami Vivekananda. And I had never heard about him before, but just thing after thing after thing kind of pointed us toward that direction. And the Divine Life Society ashram is located in Rishikesh, which is also up in the Himalayas. Yeah, it was quite funny because we had this, um, in Anital we had quite a good idea of what we wanted to do, uh, yeah. which places we wanted to visit. Uh, then we're going to spend one week in Rishikesh. Yeah. And there we didn't really know what to do. I mean, mm -hmm. you have the, yeah. the Swarg Ashram and all that, but nothing really particular that we were attracted to. No. And uh, as you mentioned, there was so many synchronicities towards Divine Life Society. Yeah. Um, I just remember that whenever I opened up my computer, there was something mentioned in the Divine yeah. Life Society or some picture coming up. Yeah. So it was really a lot of synchronicities towards that place. Yeah, and then we went, the last week we went to Dharamsala where, you know, the, the Dalai Lama lives there and uh, Tibetan Buddhism has the, the Indian center there. So, and I have a, a pretty strong connection to Tibetan Buddhism, so it felt like a good place to visit as well. Yeah, so we had a quite good, uh, yeah, good, good plan for our journey. Yeah. And uh, we started off in, in Nanital, as we mentioned, and... Uh, once we arrived in Nanital, uh, I was just taken aback of how, how peaceful and beautiful it was at this place. Uh, yeah. I really liked Nanital as a city. Yeah, and we're going to divide this journey into several episodes. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about 
the area around Nanital, and only actually the places connected to Nim Karol Baba Maharaji. Yeah, so and Kanchi Dam and uh, Garaman, yeah. uh, Hanuman Gar. So I think that Nanital are going to be at least two episodes. Yeah, and then we take Rishikesh and Dharamsala later on. Yeah, and uh, I mean, um, it was quite also quite a nice experience because we arrived in in Delhi. Yeah, quite a rather crowded place i would say it's quite a lot of people yeah, there 17 million i think there lives there as, and yeah. we come from a really small city here in sweden and 17 million people are yeah and india is yeah. also quite chaotic in many ways <laughs> yeah. yeah so it was nice to head uh, head over to nanital which is a small beautiful town up in the mountains yeah and uh, i mean once you once you take the drive and you go from halvani uh, it's really it really spirals its way up to to Kanchi uh, to Nanital, sorry. Yeah. Um, and once you get there, it's um, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, so I mean, what we're gonna talk about in this episode is our visit to the Kanchi Dam Ashram, which is uh, the place where Maharaji Nim Karole Baba spent most of his time, I think. Yeah, at, at least, least in the later part of his life. Yeah, he stayed a lot of had a uh, stayed there a lot. Yeah, and also Hanuman Gar, which uh, he also spent some time, I think. Yeah, I think you mentioned that he uh, he spent most of his time there when he was a little bit tired of the Westerners and wanted yeah. to get away into yeah, yeah solitude or. Whatever. And I also think it was in Hanuman Gar that Ramdas first met uh, Maharaji as well. All right. Yeah. Yeah, but we didn't know much about Hanuman Gar prior to this trip because m- when you read. The books of Ramdas and Krishnadas and here they talks mostly they talk about Kanchidam and most pictures you see are from Kanchidam as well. So that was the main place we want to go to. The only reason why we went to Hanumagar is because it's very close by Nanital. You can walk from the city over there. And we thought that well, well at least when we're in this area, why not? But none of us really expect expected that much of it. I thought it was a really small place, but Yeah. It was not, but we're yeah. coming to that later on. Yeah, so, I mean, the first the first day in Anital, we decided to go to Kanchidam right yeah. away. Uh, so we took a taxi over there um, after haggling with quite a few taxi drivers. Yeah. That's usually the way it goes in India. <laughs> yeah. Um, but eventually we got, uh, got going, and uh, on the way there, I was really mesmerized or taken a foot about how beautiful the Himalayan mountains were. Yeah. Uh, you're driving uh, uh, to na- uh, Kanchi and uh, I mean, just the scenery in itself, the nature around the area, yeah. it's just uh, it's such a beautiful energy there. It's just, yeah. uh, you can just breathe in the beautiful nature and it's really peaceful place to be at. Yeah, and also remember that there are a lot of wild monkeys yeah. uh, in this area and Nim Karol Baba is associated with the uh, monkey god Hanuman. So... You kind of had that connection that yeah, this is the the land of Hanuman. Yeah, in yeah, a way, at exactly. least I did that connection when when I came there. Yeah, and when we were driving a taxi or on our way to Kanchi, uh, we were listening to Om Namo Gurudev, the new song by Krishnadas. Um, yeah, it's beautiful a song about Maharaj. Yeah, it's actually kind of a prayer to his his guru Ninkaro Baba. Yeah. So we're listening to that and it was really beautiful and it really got us in a good mood. And once we started to like come around the corner, you could start seeing Kanchi Dam. Yeah, I was like, yeah, there it is. It's actually yeah. there. It's yeah. really, really there. And once you d- we drove up with the taxi and got out of the car, you s- just looking at Kanchi Dam, it felt like, wow, it's, it's actually there. I'm, I'm here right now. It's, yeah. It felt unreal. Like I was dreaming or something, but... So we spent quite a lot of time just standing outside looking at Kanchi Dam. Yeah, before we went into the ver- the temple, we kind of absorbed the uh, absorbed the environment. Just these beautiful mountains and the temple and the ashram are located located in the valley, surrounded by these beautiful mountains, and it's just yeah. and we were just looking down at it and feeling the energy there beautiful yeah but uh after standing there for quite a time i think even the taxi driver was like aren't you gonna go in and we're like all right soon <laughs> soon soon yeah and uh, <laughs> yeah eventually we, we walked in there and uh, what really hit me first and foremost when i w- went into the ashram was just the 
the peace that yeah. you felt, the, like the stillness, the peace, the yeah. serenity. Uh, instantaneously, it hit you once you started walking within the ashram. Yeah, just after a few minutes, I think, when you're walking in this place, you feel this peace growing inside of you and the serenity, and it's, it was really beautiful. And the first day we were there, we went there a second time as well, it wasn't that r- really that much people. I think it was two or three other visitors and the people working there. And so it was really calm and we had a lot of time to just sit and meditate and things like that and absorb this uh, beautiful environment. And yeah. also I might add that the actual ashram was closed uh, at this time of year. It was in April and it's I think it's spring there then. And it's cl- the yeah. ashram is closed during the winter for visitors. But it uh, didn't really matter because the temple itself and that environment is really beautiful. Yeah, I mean, once you get into the temple, the first thing you see on the right is a bunch of statues of deities. Uh, I think it's yeah. Shiva, yeah. Hanuman, I can't remember. I think it was three, four of them. Yeah. Um, really beautiful. So you looked at that first. And then on the right-hand side, that's where the the Maharaji statue is. Yeah. And... Uh, I just remember looking at it sitting there, just uh, meditating in front of it. And looking at the statue, it felt like the, it was alive. Yeah, I had the same feeling. It's really weird in a way because it felt like it was actually Maharaji in it. And you were just waiting for him to open his eyes or turn your he- his head against you and smile or something. It, it felt re- kind of surreal in a way, but yeah. really... You could really feel his presence in this area and uh, in this temple. Yeah, and uh, I mean, exactly as you said, I thought that the, that the statue is going to come to al- alive in any second right now yeah. and just do something. Um, but no, it didn't. Um, but I, I decided that I had this feeling that I wanted to meditate in yeah. front of the, the statue. So I just closed my eyes and uh, was surprised of how quite fast I was b- able to go into the meditative state. And since there was no people there, it was quite easy as to yeah sit there for a long time and meditate. Yeah. And I was meditating, and eventually I just heard this voice, like mm. it was Maharaji saying that, "Let go, just let go, yeah. uh, let surrender. go of everything, surrender." And w- I went into that feeling a little bit, and uh, I, I talked this. I think I t- talked about this before in some episodes where where you're at the threshold and you want to just let go, but you feel like if I let go, I don't know what's going to happen. If yeah. I go into this energy that's behind this threshold, I'm yeah. not sure I'm going to survive this. And actually going to the threshold is a strong experience in itself because you're going deeper and deeper and you're feeling that you're at the very threshold. And if you take one step further, you will go into this, into God. And you can feel the might of this energy yeah. kind of showering you. And yeah, it's really powerful. I mean, behind the threshold, <laughs> if, if you want to s- speak of it as a threshold, but yeah. um, behind the threshold, I mean, what you what, what is available there, what, what is there is so powerful. It's so beautiful. It's so huge. Huge. <laughs> That's the right word. It's yeah. it's. You feel like if I step into this, I'm going to explode. I, I can't yeah. be able to handle this. Or die. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So I, I started to fight with that. and Or my yeah my ego really started to um, become afraid of losing control, of like yeah. letting go. Uh, because that's when you let go, you let yeah. go. Ever. And uh, uh, so I was really taken aback and that really put me out of the experience. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was at the... S- at this threshold, if you will, and was yeah. just peeking over the threshold to see what's there. And yeah. uh, that was just amazing. Yeah, and I remember when you talked, told me about this experience, that you did it at sight, so to speak. And I wasn't really having that kind of experiences during this time. I felt the peace, the serenity and all of that. But... When I meditated, I really couldn't go that deep as you did and have this kind of strong experience. I mean, you were a- actually going almost all the way, almost all the way. And that's real big, I think. And yeah, and I remember, but wow, to be as really. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I would have let go in that moment. I don't know what would happen. Maybe. Yeah, but still. Yeah, you know, you never know. I'll 
maybe I will know one day. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> uh, hopefully, yeah. Um, but so so I was really like taken aback, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna open my eyes and forget about this. Just mm-hmm. walk around. And it was just a, such a cool experience to be in this ar- in this temple and seeing the ashram as well. Yeah. Uh, walking around and just imagining Maharaj sitting there and his yeah. uh, devotees sitting right behind, like right next to him. Yeah. Uh, just getting an idea how how it was when he was alive. Yeah. I I think that was a really cool experience, and you can also see the pictures in the temple. So. Yeah. And I remember thinking that this is the actual place where he was mm-hmm. you were sitting i mean it was he had, he had this wooden bed or bench that he usually sat on and we were sitting next to it and touching it and it, it, yeah it felt surreal in a way yeah it was a really cool experience and uh i think uh, i mean the temple was beautiful yeah. it was a really yeah. nice place and uh but i think after a while you and nicholas decided to um the copian yeah the guy we were traveling with our friend Niklas who was yeah. also with us yeah and uh, entire journey in in, in India yeah. um so you and him decided to walk out for a while yeah go outside and i felt finished uh, after a few hours and yeah. so did Niklas so we went outside and you wanted to stay a little bit longer yeah so i, I decided to stay and i i walked to the back of the temple and i i kind of just yeah whatever whatever is going to happen is going to happen yeah. i didn't have any expect- expectations at all but i decided to just sit down and meditate uh by the end of the temple i just sat there against the wall and just closed my eyes for a while um just sitting there was really going deeper within this feeling of uh serenity and peace that was in this in this area mm-hmm. and then I just opened my eyes and like looked around. I could see that Maharaji was actually everywhere. Yeah, he wasn't really in this just in this in this temple in this ashram. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could see like I looked at the mountains. I looked at the clouds. I looked at the river flowing by, and I could like really feel that that's also Maharaji. Yeah, he's also he's in, he's in the entire area. Everything that I'm looking at right now, everything that I perceive with my eyes and my senses, that's Maharaji. Yeah. So that was a really cool experience. And I was just sitting in that and just not ex- expecting anything, like mm-hmm. not going, trying to find something or go beyond the threshold. I just, yeah, relaxed into it. Yeah. And then I just, uh, I just noticed that that was what really, yeah, made me go deeper. Yeah. Uh, just letting go and just not caring. Mm. And I was just sitting there really peaceful and going deeper and deeper within that. It was also interesting. Um, there was this man, an Indian man, walking by, and he has had been at the statue with Maharaji. Yeah. And he was walking by, and he see saw me, and then he just like looked at me, and I could see what state of being he was in. Yeah. And I could sense that he was also noticing what state of being I was in. Yeah. Like we have this real namaste. Yeah. Uh, like, I see the divinity in you, and and vice versa. Yeah. 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 And it was a really beautiful experience, and it said something like "Ninkaroli Baba Maharaj" or did some prayer and yeah. just nodded to me, and I like nodded back, and it was mm. a really cool experience just to have that that exchange with him as yeah. well. Um, so, yeah, just feeling like I was sitting there, just being absorbed by by Maharaj in that yeah. moment. So, but afterwards, uh, we decided to leave. Uh, I think we all actually stayed until. They closed the temple yeah, at yeah. six o'clock. Yeah. Uh, so we also stayed for the, the closing ceremony, yeah. which uh, was quite nice. Yeah. Uh, it was a good experience, but nothing particular happened. Yeah. Um, but all in all, it was a really good day, I think. Yeah, it, it was, was beautiful. Beautiful. Day. And it was a good start of a wonderful journey, I think. Yeah. And uh, I think it was the next day, the yeah. second day, where we decided to go to Hanumangar. Yeah, and as I said before, we didn't really have any expectation of this place. I thought it would be small and one of the smaller temples dedicated to Maharaji. But it was close by, so we thought, well, we just take a bo- walk over there and, and see what it's like. Yeah, and fr- looking at it from the outside, I thought it, well, eh, it might be one or two rooms, yeah, small it temple. Look like much yeah, at exactly. All. So. Uh, was really taken by surprise once you got in there. Yeah, the first thing that meets you are this huge statue of Hanuman. 
that's really mighty and powerful and then you, when you walk into the temple it's really big and it's really beautiful i mean yeah you're stunningly on, beautiful yeah you're on top of this mountain and uh the view is beautiful the surrounding is beautiful there's nature all around like yeah. really really beautiful temple yeah and it's much larger than you think because when you walk in you just see a part of it and that's just the first room and then you there's a lot of rooms behind and then you walk outside f over this you know walkway outside and you come to another part that's outside that's really beautiful and we fell in love with this place immediately and yeah and, and i actually thought that this is in a way more beautiful and mo had a be nicer atmosphere than kanji dan yeah in a i way. agree so i was just blown away i felt like what why have i never heard about this uh, everyone is talking about kanji dan but this place is amazing yeah yeah i, I agree completely i mean it was so peaceful yes the same feeling of like peace and serenity yeah. and also i forgot to mention that when during the meditation but what what i felt there also was that i didn't have a single care in the world yeah like i could have stayed there forever yeah you just and want to walk around and yeah be. yeah and you're just happy in that moment you just walk around and just ah, look at the statues look yeah. at the paintings and yeah. You just feel so peaceful. You feel so happy and everything is just divine. And you, at this place, you had the same feeling as it, as in Kanji Dam. You feel this inner peace just yeah. coming immediately when you step inside and it just absorbs you and just you just walk around and feel really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically. Um, like the worries back home or mm. anything at all, like all gone it's just you're just there it's you the don't want to leave and inside the temple they have this beautiful room which is the crown jewel i think in yeah. this temple it's it's a room dedicated to maharaji it's a beautiful carpet and on the walls are pictures of maharaji and then in the front are this uh, maharaji murti the statue of uh, of uh, ninkarola baba uh, yeah yeah and a uh, beautiful room as you said i mean yeah. it's uh really nice energy in that room yeah, like the vibrations and everything you feel when you go into a room yeah and actually uh, the room was closed yeah yeah but this temple caretaker we asked him if he could go inside and he opened up the the gate for us and let us in and he also also said that if you like you can sing some kirtan because there were some instruments in there and and we did eventually yeah we we started out by us sitting there meditating then i think it was actually you who started to sing the Om Namo Gurudev, the, the same song. Uh, yeah, the, the Maharaji um, prayer that Krishna has yeah. recently made. That's going to be on his new uh, album. Yeah, and it's it's a beautiful song, so yeah. check it out. But uh, we s you started singing that, and I asked, I went along with it. Uh, we yeah. sang together too, and it was a cool experience because it was one of the first time where it felt like I was genuinely hundred percent singing to Maharaji, like oh yeah. Because this for, was for him. You were not at home. You were actually in his temple, the way he used to stay, and the statue was right in front of you. It was like he's sitting there, and you were worshiping him and honoring him with this prayer and this song yeah. directly to him, and it was beautiful. And I remember the feelings of love that just bubbled up inside me it was so amazing. And yeah, it's a powerful experience to sit yeah. in that room, and we sat there for quite a while. Yeah. yeah it was just uh, i think that was the what i really take with me from from that yeah. um, visit to that temple yeah. uh just sitting in that room and singing to him that that was just really special yeah. um then we walked by the side of the if you go out of the temple you can continue walking a little bit yeah, yeah right we next saw to that it. it was this kind of uh, track going up the hill outside of the temple yeah. and we were actually going just going up and see what was there and we came across another temple another mm. ashram that was not a new carol baba ashram yeah yeah we came across this um this small temple if you will uh yeah, i think it was ashram as well there was there yeah. was living there and spending time there yeah so we was yeah walking around trying to figure out where we were uh, what yeah. this this place was yeah and this man came up to us and we asked him who who did this place belong to? And uh, they mentioned, uh, um, I'm not I don't know too much about him, but yeah. his name was uh, Swami uh, Lilasha. 
yeah. I think was his name. Yeah. And uh, he had practiced uh, for a very long time in this very room that we were allowed into. Yeah. Uh, I think he had did his spiritual practice there for yeah, 20, yeah. 30 years or quite a long time. Yeah, and he became enlightened and self-realized eventually. And yeah. this was his devotees taking care of the, the ashram. Yeah. So we were able to sit in there and meditate for a while. And it was also a yeah, nice like a experience. Nice surprise to find another saint, uh, not as well known or perhaps not as big as Maharaji, but still... Uh, a, a pleasant surprise and ha to have his darshan, if you like, as well. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the caretakers of the ashram seemed really surprised to see three Westerners come up there. I don't think it happens that often. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, for sure. And I think actually the main reason why we wanted to go up there was that we wanted to look for for a cave of Sombari Baba. Yeah, because when Maharaji came to Nanital and the area, he asked for where Sambara Baba had stayed, this old saint that we're going to talk about in the next episode. Mm -hmm. And he built his temples on old sites of Sambara Baba. And yeah. we knew that there, should, there was a cave where Sambara Baba lived close to Hanumangar, but we didn't actually find it. So that's why we were going up the mountain yeah. in search for that. And yeah, unfortunately we didn't find it, but yeah. who knows? Maybe there was someone sitting there having his uh, sadhana at the now so yeah. perhaps we shouldn't they interrupt didn't him. they we asked for it but they kind of they didn't want us to go there <laughs> it was quite yeah. clear it f it felt like they really knew that what we were looking for but they didn't want us to go there yeah that was that's what's my my feeling at least yeah. uh, we respected that yeah of course and uh, so it was a beautiful day in in Hanumagar and yeah. uh, but we both of us had a really uh, strong intuitive feeling that we needed to oh, go first, 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 yeah. first. Sorry. there's one more thing about Hanumangar I want to mention yeah sure during the evening we could see fireworks oh, yeah, yeah. going they were shooting fireworks during the evening from Hanumangar and we were thinking what is happening at Hanumangar why are they shooting fireworks and then you noticed that it was Ramdas's birthday yeah and that felt like this beautiful synchronicity that when we went to Hanumangar and Kanshidam as well for that matter because we know about these places because of Ramdas. I mean, he's the one who made Maharajin famous in the Western world and mm -hmm. also actually famous in India because Maharaji wasn't that very well known in India as well. Yeah. Uh, and it was his birthday and it felt like, you know, the circle was coming around. We, we had the, possibi the possibility to on Ramdas on his birthday in Hanumangar, the place where he first met Maharaj. It was just yeah. like... It was beautiful. Yeah, it was meant to happen. And yeah. and you could really see how much they honor Ramdas over there. I mean, he was he is one of the greatest devotees and most well-known devotees of Maharaj. Mm. And they really honor Ramdas over there. Yeah, and what's interesting is it's been such a long time since he was with Maharaj. Yeah. So such a long time since he was in Nanital and Kanchi and all that. But still they remember him and they honor yeah. him on his birthday. And it's yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. It just shows you how much influence uh, Ramdas has had on yeah. so many people, including us, which we are so grateful yeah. for. So it felt when we were sitting at a, uh, outside on a balcony at our hotel and saw these fireworks and it just felt, I, I, I felt this huge gratitude towards Ramdas. Yeah. So it felt, it was beautiful. Yeah, it so was. Yeah. So yeah. back to the story. Yeah, so we're, um, we, on the next few days after Hanumangar, we yeah. traveled to a few other locations, including yeah. Padampuru and Kakrigat. Yeah, the, uh, so Bar Baba has two, uh, had two ashrams when he lived, one in yeah. Padampuru and one in Kakrigat. And also in Kakrigat, at the same place, is another Nimkarol Baba temple. Yeah. Because, Kanchi Dam are the caretakers of one of Sambara Baba's ashrams in Kakrigat. Yeah. And next to that is also um, Swami Vivekanda ashram as well. So we visited, th visited these th places in the next upcoming days. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about those ex what we felt there and what we experienced on those locations uh, in an upcoming episode. Yeah. But while we want to mention this is because when we went back from Kakrigat, uh, one of the ashrams of Sambara Baba, 
uh, we felt that we needed to visit Kanchidam one more time. Yeah, and not only felt, it was a really strong intuitive feeling that I had to return to Kanchidam one more time before we headed over to Rishikesh. And I think we we're only going to stay one more day at in this area and yep. the, the this feeling i even the first the after first day i felt well we probably we should go back one more time but yep. this feeling just grew stronger and stronger and we have to go back mm. basically yeah so we ended up going there and yeah. i think what happened for for you at least uh, was especially was uh, a really amazing experience yeah it was in a way one of the biggest moments in my life well in in one way, from one perspective at least, yeah, because yeah. It, I had a huge experience uh, that I value very highly. Uh, what happened was that we came back to Kanchidam, and this time there was a lot of visitors there, so m- a lot a lot more people than the first day, and also they had opened up a few more places in the in the temple, the room where Maharaja used to sleep, and also. Behind that room is this cave where I think Sumbara Baba lived as well. Mm. Um, but anyway, we were sitting, so you, we had the opportunity to meditate inside the room where Maharaja used to live. But the experience that I had happened when I meditated in front of the Maharaja statue. So I was sitting, meditating in front of that statue together with a bunch of other people, Indian people that I didn't know but it, I feel I felt really beautiful to sit there with people from another country we don't know each other but we are sharing the same love for this man mm. and it felt so beautiful I mean yeah that's that in itself is I think is a really beautiful yeah. experience yes that what Maharaj has been able to do yes bring people from the west from the east and just connect them yeah. and just share this love for for yeah. him basically yeah, yeah. And it kind of all the cultural barriers are crossed because of this beautiful man. Yeah. So I was sitting there meditating and after a while I stopped meditating and I opened my eyes and I started to chant instead, sing the uh, Om Namo, uh, what's it called? Gurudev. Om Namo Gurudev, the, the Krishna Das uh, prayer t- to Ninkara Baba. So I started to sing that again, the same song that we sang in Hanumangar. And when I started to sing that, something started started to happen the first thing that happened was that i could really feel how my heart was opening up to to the love from maharaji and i started to cry uh, not a sad kind of crying but the cry of you know overwhelming feelings of love so that was the first first thing first thing that happened and then i started to giggle and I couldn't control myself. I started to giggle and I felt so happy. So I stopped uh, singing and stood up and walked around th- this area, this temple. And I realized that I had slided into a really high state of being. I was feeling like high, mm. uh, like intoxicated on, on God, on Maharaji. And you and I have tried psychedelics and had really powerful experiences on psychedelics. And this was exactly like one of those experiences, but without any psychedelics. So for me, yeah. that was huge because I had never had a, an experience sober this strong before. So yeah. this was a game changer for me to see that I was able to go into these states of being without the help of psychedelics. Yeah, and it really, really shows you also that it is possible. It's all within you. Yeah. You don't need it actually, but no, uh, you can find it within yourself as well. Yeah. Uh, if you just l- let it come through. And I was extremely happy and very here and now at, at that moment. And I also knew intuitively that this was the reason why I had to come back because this was going to happen. And when I had that, had this experience, I felt, well, now I'm, now I'm, it's, I'm ready to leave. I don't need to be here anymore. But also I can mention that it was not only the feelings of, I felt like a power plant, I mean, the energies were so strong inside me, but also the visuals changed like they do during psychedelics. Everything looked divine and the colors were popping and all of that stuff is really wonderful. Yeah, and uh, as for me, I, I mean, I also had this feeling of wanting to go back there. And so I went yeah. in, I paid my respects to Maharaji, uh, like saying thank you so much for, yeah. for these experiences and everything you given us and uh yeah thank you and 
to yeah. buy pretty much um and didn't really have any experience to yeah. talk about so so i decided to leave quite early on and i was uh, went outside and i was, came a, a few guys uh, indian guys asking was really curious why i was there yeah. and how i heard of maharaj and so forth so i was talking to them and uh, after a while i got get this like knock on my shoulder and i look around and there's you standing yeah. there i could s- feel the energy just pouring out of you yeah like also almost hit the back a little bit because yeah. i felt like the energy and i was also a little bit thrown into it myself yeah. for a small period of second there yeah it was so strong it was yeah amazing basically yeah. and also when i was down at temple and this state of being i was in this state of being i uh, well i talked to nicholas the our friend and i could see that he was also in a similar state of being and he could also n- see that I was in it. So uh, we decided to to go out because, I, as I said, I felt that this was the reason I was going back here. And now when this has happened, I had no reason to stay. So yeah. while I was walking out, I met this Indian man that was go- walking towards the temple. He was going inside. And immediately when he saw me, he, you know, st- his face just, he had this big smile and when he saw me and nodded to me and i also smiled because i could see that he could see what kind of state i was in and i could see that he was in the very same state Mm. and i knew that he knew and he knew that i knew and it was this as you said namaste moment when we could see the divine in ourselves and this is very interesting because when you are in this kind of state of being you can see who are there and who are not Mm. and this man was definitely in that state of being and he could see and he was very glad to see that i was there as well that was a cool experience yeah i imagine um so i think that was what happened in kan yeah um yeah after that we we just had it home and had a good night's sleep and uh the next days we decided to go to Parampur and Kakragat. Yeah. So I think we're going to cover that in the next episode. Yeah, and I think this experience also, it only lasted for about 34 minutes. So it's kind of faded off during the taxi journey back ho- b- home to the hotel. But I was really stoked. And yeah. we had one day left during this journey. And that there I also had a strong experience. But that will be in... First, we'll take the next episode will be about some Barbaba ashrams. Yeah, I just want to mention quickly, when you... I just rem- remember that I got a little bit jealous when you had this experience yeah. because I had this yeah, like feeling a strong intuitive feeling to go b- back there as well. Yeah. And nothing happened to me, but it happened for you. And I was like, yeah, what the what the hell, man? Yeah. Why why did he get and I uh, didn't I get this cool experience? Um so at first I was uh, jealous yeah. about it, but then I realized that what what I needed to learn and what it showed me was that um I mean, this was you had a great experience uh, yeah. just sitting there and i should be s- thankful for that that yeah. you had a good experience so uh once i shifted my focus and just realized what what i was supposed to learn yeah. during that experience is yeah. like ah yeah that's but it's I should be thankful because the first day we, we were there and you had your strong experience and i didn't yeah. have none i felt also a little bit jealous when we were talking about it and but i also shifted after a while i realized well he has his journey and I have my journey and we're doing it in different ways. And yeah. It's just the way it is. And yeah, but it's, uh, things happen. You have an ego and it will yeah, react for sure. And it's, and I think yeah, those, 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 I mean that less, those kind of lessons are perhaps even more important than being in walking around in bliss because you, yeah. d- when you're in the bliss, it's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's when you're in your ego, that's when you need, we really need to like take, uh, be, uh, be conscious about what happens yeah, and exactly. see like ah there my yeah. ego goes again yeah so you can so you catch it yeah um yeah but i think that's it for this episode yeah um like next episode i think we're going to talk about sombari baba and kakrugat and padampuri yeah and that will and those are two beautiful places so don't miss the next episode all right so thank you for watching thank you mm-hmm.